Hi everyone, uh, Brian and Helen back here. Uh, we're gonna now talk to you guys a little bit about trimming around the face, um, the feet, and the fanny. So um, tips and trade uh, stuff that you can guys can use while you're at home uh, for when you come back. Um, hopefully uh, we won't be gone for too much longer, um, but uh, let's get going. So flip the camera around here. All right, so Helen and Wally back here, and now we're gonna start off with his face a little bit. And so I'm sure you all are, who have like dogs that need haircuts, that you're all having this problem with the hair being in the eyes. As you can see, my lovely mother has been doing some trimming at home, which I'm sure you all have been doing too, and that's fine, that's totally fine. I'm not mad about it. So <laughs> what you're gonna wanna do to safely trim a face at home, and to hopefully try to save some of the top of the head. Um, Cause she, most people I've noticed when they're trying to trim around the eyes, they end up cutting up here. Which I understand now, because you probably don't want to poke them in the eyes. Is that what you were gonna say? Well, I was gonna ask, what are the safe methods as far as, um, cause remember a lot of these people are gonna be using dull scissors at yes. home. They're not gonna have the professional scissors. Kitchen scissors and little personal grooming scissors, I'm sure. So I wish I had some really crappy scissors, but. Um, I don't have anything. I just have my big ones. So you're obviously probably not going to be using scissors this big. This is for a professional. But I'm going to show you what you can try, hopefully try to do at home in the safest possible way. So, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but Wally has some pretty, he's got some eye boogers. Not as bad as I've seen before, but he's got some eye boogers going on. So I know some of you are probably not sure how to get those out. So a good way to actually do it is if you have your metal comb, use the, the closer together side and you can actually get those out, sometimes just lightly, lightly, just picking at it with your comb. It's a lot less painful than like just trying to pull it out with your fingers or I don't know what you guys are trying to do at home, but this is like a nice little way. See, he's tolerating it pretty good. What about like a wet uh, washcloth or? Yeah, so for, Oh, it, it depends on how bad, like I've seen it where it's so caked that it's like all the way down to the skin. So if it's that caked on, you're gonna wanna use like a washcloth or if you're doing um, any home bathing, which we'll be covering later, um, you could try to get the eye boogers out of the tub, which is actually one of the better ways if they're really bad, because then that way you can let them soak in the warm water with the shampoo and it helps to loosen it up and then you can usually get it out that way. But if they're not as bad as that, because that's pretty extreme and it's just more like normal everyday eye boogers, you can just loosen up with your comb or if if your comb takes them out, that's great. Or like after you loosen it, just take your fingers or if that grosses you out, you can take like a tissue. Because I know some people get grossed out by that. It's fine. And you can pick it out. Um, and that actually is something that you're going to want to try to do almost every day. Because dogs... Um, a lot of dogs, like with their hair that grows, those eye boogers can build up very fast, almost daily. They can they can build up, which is why a lot of times when they by the time they come to me, because I know some people don't clean them out at home because they get grossed out. So if you don't clean your dog's eyes for between four to six weeks, that stuff builds up, and then I have to I have to deal with it. And un unfortunately, that can cause like fungal issues, which is why like sometimes like if ever you notice that if we've taken a it's shorter around the eyes and it's like bold looking or reddish. That's a lot of times not due to um, any like razor burn. That's due to they had a fun they have a fungus infection going on um, due to the moisture of the um, of the eye drainage sitting there on the skin. So that's actually it's a very that's a very important thing um, for all breeds, even short hair because short hair is even easier. You can just take a wipe, wipe it right off. Um, okay, so then after you've removed the eye boogers. You can comb the hair forward like this. So that way you, everything that's falling in front of their face, you can try to get. So you're gonna take your scissors. Now this is not how I would do it, but this is how I want you guys to safely do it at home. You're gonna take your finger and you're gonna trim like that. Why am I using my fingers? Because if I'm gonna cut something, it's better to cut myself than the dog. Trust me, you don't ever want to want to cut the dog. Not just because you don't want to hurt them, but also, you know, you can you can scar them emotionally and make it so that 
then by the time you do bring them back to me, they're terrified of me going near them with scissors. And since See? vets are mostly only taking emergency cases, that's a bill you don't want. Oh gosh, yeah, no. So use your fingers, and you're not, unfortunately with your fingers in the way, you're not gonna be able to maybe get it as short as you would like, but that's okay. You just want it enough so that it's out of their face, they can see, and we're, it's not like attracting dirt and eye boogers and all that stuff. So you're just gonna trim, and then also I'm sure you wanna get this stuff. Once again, depending on how long it is, you can take your fingers, get your, keep your hand in the way, and just trim it off. Just a buffer from the skin and the eyes. and. Yeah, because once again, like I said, if I get my scissors too close, I'm gonna cut myself. And we don't wanna do that. We don't want, we don't want anybody getting cut. There we go. See, that already made a big difference just right there. So if you have to do that at home, that's gonna help them a lot. So I'm just gonna do the other side. And take the finger. Look, there's my booger in that. I'm just gonna cut that off. It's not the prettiest look, but we're not necessarily going for looks right now. This is quarantine, <laughs> who cares? We're just going for, we're going for maintenance and just comfort for, for your, for your baby. And then are you recommending the same type of technique for like around the mouth? Absolutely. Yeah, my mom was just asking me about this because um, he, all, all, you see all this hair. It gets in his mouth and stuff and it's gross and then it gets stinky. So once again, no more tape. Now this isn't going to look pretty, but it's, 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 if this is something, you, you know, if you don't want the hair in their mouth, it's, this is what you got to do and then I'll fix it later. So you're going to want to just take your hands with your fingers in the way if they'll tolerate it. He's being very good in allowing me to do this. Now, some dogs aren't gonna allow you to do this. And if they don't, leave it alone. Because <laughs> you don't, these, these are very sharp. Whatever kind of scissors you're using, they're dangerous. And we've seen so, people using dull scissors at home chunk a dog and oh it's not gosh. pretty. I've seen it a few times. So um, if, if, you're, if your dog is giving you trouble, let it go. Let it go, let me deal with it. Um, so that's gonna be like your good, just basic. So as you see, it just kind of got stuff out of the way. Got his mouth a little shorter. Like I said, it's not it's not beautiful, but that's okay. That's not what we're going for right now. We're going for, so if you wanna go underneath, once again, take your fingers in the way. This is not how I would do this professionally at all. But like I said, this is for, this is for you guys at home so that nobody gets hurt. There we go. And then you could just do the same to the other side. You're just gonna lift, take your fingers, just trim off. Like I said, don't worry about how it looks. Just really don't. We're just going for we're going for maintenance. I know these aren't the uh, best uh, angles and stuff, but remember, we're also maintaining our social distance here. Right. So as you see, I'm pointing my scissors this way, which I know that's probably something. Like every time people see me do this, they're like, "Why do you do it that way?" Because this way looks pretty good. Okay. So go this way. If your dog's behaving well enough, you can angle your hands how whatever is more comfortable for you, and you're just gonna trim away. You can do the same for in the front. Keep your fingers in the way, cut it straight across, whatever. It actually doesn't look that bad for a home warming job. Um, like I said, he's gonna feel better just from just from that. Um, so how about ears next? Okay, so ears. <clears throat> Be prepared. They're mad. As you see, they're still pretty clean. I know that um, ear plucking and hair in the ears is a huge controversy for vets and groomers. Every vet, different vets will tell you different things to pluck, not to pluck. I've been told by, I've been told both by vets. Um, same with groomers. Some groomers absolutely refuse to pluck ears no matter what because they think it's cruel and that they don't need it. Some groomers are Absolutely, every dog needs to have their ears cleaned, their ear, their the, the hair plucked out completely. Like so, it it there's different opinions. I guess nobody really knows, but my opinion is, I just like to I I'll, I'll do whatever you ask, but I personally like to leave the hair and just cut it as short as it will go, because it doesn't hurt them unless of course they have an ear infection going on. Then we're gonna want to clear out that ear canal, and it doesn't always have to. It doesn't have to be completely naked. Just enough so that you can see down into the air canal and get that medicine in or, you know, get the air flowing. But also, honestly, just clipping them, just knee clipping them is going to help with that. So what I would say, if you're concerned about the hair in the ears at home, you can do a little bit of plucking. Um, if you have 
Now, some dogs are, are sensitive to ear powder. I was just gonna um, say you could use like baby powder if you can't, because the, the powder helps to grip. And But if you don't have powder, that's okay. I don't necessarily, I just, just try to use your hands and pull a little bit out at a time, but as you, it doesn't feel very good, which is also why I just, I honestly prefer to shave it. Um, if you don't feel comfortable plucking them at home, then don't worry about it. I would just say do this. Um, as far as cleaning, his ears could still be clean because they do, they are a little bit waxy, but they're not red. They don't have an odor. I mean, he's got an odor because he's a stinky boy right now, but it's, it's just like a regular stinky odor. Um, it doesn't have any, nothing that I'm concerned about. So that, um, if I was just, you know, a home at home, I would just leave it. Don't worry about it. So would you recommend trimming some of the long hair out or just if you can get you your can. fingers between or just. Yeah, if you can, because his hair is actually, it's pretty long, but there's a, there's a lot of divots and crevices and stuff in ears. So if you feel comfortable and your dog is holding still enough, you can, you can take your fingers once again, watch where your scissors are and you can trim that out. Please don't stick your scissors in their ears and try to cut it out. I've seen people try to do that. Even groomers will do that. It's very dangerous. If they, any jerk can, they can, you know, it could be disastrous. So don't do anything like that. Don't be, don't, don't do that. Just, just get what you can. And like I said, leave it for us. And honestly, there are vets that are still open. If you are concerned, vets can pluck ears. You can make an appointment and the vet will do it for you as well. So I know he doesn't have long ears, but we have some breeds um, like Shih Tzus and stuff that'll have the long ears. Mm -hmm. um, what do you recommend as far as going with cutting those? Because I know some people, you know, like to take it real close, but now is probably not the best time for that. No, it is not the best time. But um, I actually have a really good trick that one of our other groomers introduced us to. Um, Amanda told us about this trick that she saw. So his ears aren't that long, but you can take... You can take little rubber bands and oh, that's a little bit nice. So depending on how long or short your dog's ears are, you can tie the end. It's not quite long enough. But for you at home with like Shih Tzus and longer eared dogs, you can take the end and you can put, I'm just gonna put it right here. And then and then you can cut. So if, it, if he has like long ears, then you can actually like take the rubber bands on either side, cut it straight across, make sure that rubber, make sure you know where the, where the ear actually is. Always feel with your finger, know where the hair, you know, starts and the ear ends. So as long as you're within those guidelines, go for it, snip it. Almost always you come out with a nice, even looking, looking ears. That's what I, that's what I recommend for trimming long ears. All right, so now that we're done with the ears and stuff, what about the feet? All righty, so feet. And we're just talking about trimming here. We'll talk about nails and stuff later. Right now, these, these are just trimming guidelines. So, dogs are different from humans. If you're gonna go for the feet, pick it up, pick it up loose so that they're comfortable. You're not gonna wanna like stretch them out. You're not gonna wanna pull towards you or pull away. Pick it up loosely, how they would normally walk. You can check how the pad's looking. As you can see, they're pretty long. And I know for some people with older dogs, it can cause like, you know, your dog to slip if you have some hard, hardwood floors at home. So, um, do you want to use the clicker or do you want to show? Yeah, look, okay. we can. Um, oh. So one thing we were talking about earlier is a lot of people have clippers at home. For most stuff, we're going to recommend you use a guard. Um, but with pads, as long as you're not going into the pad, clippers. Yeah, so I don't want, I'm not going to tell you anything that we would do professionally because it's, it's going to be more dangerous for those who are not experienced, especially if your dog doesn't like this. We don't want anybody getting hurt, you or the dog. So you're just going to lightly pick up the foot. So I wanted to show you with my finger. You can, let's see if he doesn't like this. He just said that he would hate but you can stick your finger all up in this pad. So you can feel that there's like divots. And a lot of times actually, this is a big spot for dogs to get matted. So if you can keep up on keeping this hair short, it can help prevent matting in the toes, which can actually help like deform the foot and cause pain when they walk. Um, he doesn't have any matting right now, but they are quite long. So you can take 
your scissors. If they're behaving, if he was not being good for this, I would not do it. I can just open this up. Oh wait, we're not doing clippers. We're doing clippers. Anyway, so if you have clippers at home, dog clippers, human clippers, I know some people use human clippers. Um, so I'm gonna take this out. I'm just bending it from the I used my husband's uh, beard trimmers on Sparty. So okay. you're just gonna wanna take, so this is just the blade, whether it's for humans or whatever, it's the shortest blade. And you're just gonna skim it over, over the hair, that's it. You're not going anywhere, you're not going inside the pad. Just get that hair on top, if they let you. He's being pretty good right now. And it's not gonna look perfect, but it's gonna be enough that it'll, it'll hopefully help with the slipping and any potential matting, or any exist, it'll help hopefully any existing matting or keep it from getting worse. So. It's not perfect, but it'll, it, as you can see, you can see like more of his pad now, so that's gonna help him grip the floor better. So that's something easy you can do at home if the dog, like you can get somebody else to hold too, if they, if you. If you have a quarantine yeah. buddy. <laughs> so back foot, so as you see, the way I'm lifting, it's very loose. I'm, ha I'm using an extremely light touch, light, 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 just enough to just get, I know Bubba, it tickles, Sally. Boy. And again, we're not going into the crevice of the pad, just going over to get that excess hair that's yep. on the top. Let us worry about getting the deep stuff yeah. when you're able to come back. The main thing is you just want to clear, clear the hair so that the pads are exposed so that they can get better grip. That's all. Nothing crazy. This is just a little bit of home maintenance before you can get to us. All right. And last but not least, what about that fanny ear? Because we know a lot of dogs are... Getting poop all over their back ends right now. Okay, so this is a tough one. Um, for the most part, I would say keep the scissors away from the butt. Keep the keep everything away from the butt. But if your dog happens to have, you know, some dingleberries that you really, really just you can't stand anymore, I understand. So if you have clippers at home and you have guards, you're gonna to wanna to take a shorter guard. These are dog clippers, so I have to change my And let's explain, um, cause you were explaining to me earlier, why do they not wanna take the clipper directly to the butt? So if you're taking a blade directly to the butt and you are not a professional and you don't know about the blades heating up or pressure that you're supposed to use or different angles that you need to go, you can really, really hurt your dog's butt. That's a very, very sensitive area, as I'm sure, you know, for anybody. So if you, if you do it wrong, or even if, even with using a guard, you have to be so careful. Um, so if you have like a lot of matting on that butt or, an, or a lot of poop on that butt and this guard won't go through, um, leave it, just leave it because I know it's gross, but you're just going to cause more harm than helping. But if your guard will go through, if you can, if like, cause his butt's not that bad. It's just a little bit, the hair's just a little bit long. You can, they lay you on so it's easier for me to do it on this side because I'm right-handed. So the way I do it, if you're doing it by yourself, just put your arm under here to keep them from sitting down. Or down to their tail. This would be. And you can just, from, from the base of their tail, now if his tail was longer, I'd be holding it up here. But so from kind of the bottom of the tail though, if his tail was longer. Light, oh yeah, it's matted. But as you see, I'm just lightly, lightly, I'm not pulling. And you got it. And we got some poop off with that too, cool. You can go, you can go backwards. Once again, light, if you are not careful, this can go right up the butthole. I'm not saying to be funny, like that's for, re that's for real, it's not a joke, it can hurt really bad, so you wouldn't need to be. Light, keep that, keep those clippers flush to the body. You're not, not trying to dig or anything like that. You're keeping them flush and you're just lightly, and if it, if it pulls, you can either, like I said, lightly pick at it, or if it's too bad, let it go. Um, because trying to do, trying to do scissors here, especially if you have a female dog, it's, it's, it's very dangerous. It's, 
but like if you're trying to shave or whatever, you know, it can you can really hurt them. So as long as the matting or the poop buildup isn't too bad, I say go for it. Um, but if it's too bad, you can either a you can you can contact your vet to do like a, a medical shave because I've seen some where it's it, it's just so bad. But um, but if it's not that bad and you feel like you can wait, just wait it out. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a break here, give Wally a break. We're going to answer some questions um, you guys have submitted, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit, and we'll talk about uh, nails.